Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to talk about the scene referred workflow. The scene referred workflow is the new recommended workflow of Dark Table. It is as well called the linear workflow and that is in comparison to the display referred in display referred the image is directly exported into the color space of the display you are currently using. The displays are designed according to our eyes and what they can see. For instance, our eyes compensate for the shadows and the dark part of the images which appear lighter. As a result, the display color space has a narrower range. So some information is lost when you transform the data from the image into the display color space. However, in the scene referred, the data is left as it is or as closely as possible to the original image. So there is no effect on the color or dynamic range. As a result, editing images in the scene referred workflow can help reduce artifacts and color shifts that could otherwise appear in the display referred workflow. And it makes it easier to move your work from one display to another or from one medium to the other. For this reason, since version 3.0 in Darktable, it is recommended to process your images in scene referred workflow. That means that you have to limit your workflow to the modules that support the scene referred workflow. And we have a easy way of selecting these modules since version 3.4 by going into the menu here and selecting workflow scene referred. If we select modules all you can see all of the modules and if you go to workflow scene referred you only see the modules that support it. Exposure is automatically enabled by default in this workflow and the default setting is at 0.5 exposure compensation. This is supposed to emulate the standard post-processing of most in-camera JPEGs. I'm not going to go into details with every module because these modules have either been discussed previously or we will be discussing them in previous videos. Refer to the video series Darktable from A to Z if you'd like to learn more. However, I'm just going through them in the order that is suggested by the user manual as part of the workflow. Next, it's recommended that we work on the white balance. After that, filmic RGB. Then, if needed, the crop and rotate. Retouch. Color balance. Tone equalizer, local contrast, denoise, haze removal, here it is, color calibration and lens correction. Afterwards, you have modules that are not recommended, but the user manual says you, you can use them with care because they say there is no alternative. However, these modules do not appear in the set workflow scene referred, so you'd have to add them manually or use another group if you want to use them. And these are vibrance color zones and vignetting. And on top of that, there's the watermark, the grain module, the color mapping, uh, low light vision and graduated density that are considered art for artistic effects. So they're not part of the basic workflow, but you can use them. The user manual as well suggests a list of modules to avoid and recommended modules to use as a replacement. For instance, the local tone mapping is deprecated, should use the tone equalizer. The global tone map as well, should use the filmic RGB. Shadows and highlights as well not, should use the tone equalizer. 
and so on and so forth. I'll put a link in the description below. You can refer to it if you have a favorite module that's not part of the new recommended workflow, then refer to that list and see how you can achieve the same results using the recommended modules. That's the scene referred workflow in a nutshell. It's more about learning how to use the modules and relearning how to achieve the same result using a different module than what we've already been using until now or what we're used to. But as we've seen till now in the rest of the series, the recommended modules are quite powerful. In some cases are even more powerful than the previous tools. So it's worth the effort to learn how to use them. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, remarks or corrections, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.